Hi, this is Jeannie with Nona Scraps, and we're going to be making a paper bow that perfectly coordinates with whatever you want it to because you've chosen the materials for the bow. It's a process that can be done in either Cricut Craft Room, on the Gypsy, or in any of your SVG softwares like Make the Cut or um, Scal. I'm going to be using Make the Cut today because it's what I happen to have open, but truly it's a very similar process. The images that you need or the cuts that you need are going to be a rounded edge rectangle. It could be a square with the rounded edges that we're going to shape to a specific size and a circle. I'm going to move my circle out of the way for now and I'm going to size my first rectangle. What we're going to do is create the basic um, cut that we're going to be using and truthfully all we're going to be doing is sizing it up or down after we get the, the, the cut set up and ready to go. I'm going to size this to go up to my sizing and lock aspect ratio and I want to unlock it because I'm going to be sizing the width and the height independently. Now the way my mat's laying in this software, the width is the longest part of this cut. I'm going to size this width at 3.5 and press enter and I'm going to be sizing the, this part or the height at 0.5. There we go, half an inch wide. And now I'm going to take and I'm going to work with my circle and I'm going to size it. For it, I'm going to lock my aspect ratio and I want to size it down to a 0.25 or a quarter of an inch. I'm going to need at least two of these, so I'm going to control D and make the cut or copy and paste in my other programs. And now I have two circles. I'm going to take one, let me zoom in just a little bit, maybe I don't want to. I'm going to take one of my circles and I'm going to place it at the end of my strip. Oh, so it's somewhere around a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'm going to select it and I'm going to either join or weld it. It's your choice. Whatever your software does. And now I'm going to duplicate this particular image. I'm going to either copy and paste it or duplicate it with one, three rows one column and make the cut, zero spacing, and I'm going to separate them out just a little bit. And with my Cricut supplies, I would be copying and pasting the same thing. Now, these two I'm going to set up here out of the way because they're going to be the streamers for my bow. And I'm going to take my other circle and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to place it about the same as the first one, the end of my bow, and I could align it if I wanted to, but I'm going to just go ahead, select, shape magic, and join. And now that I've got that piece done, this is going to be the loop of my bow, I'm going to duplicate this five times for a total of five. If you want a little fuller bow, you can do it six, but I kind of like the way the five looks. So control D. I'm going to space it out just a little bit more. I'll put point one. Um, I'm going to have rows five. There you have it. Now I'm going to take my last one and I'm going to duplicate it again. Just cancel that. I want just two rows and apply. Now I'm going to, this is where you have to really kind of pay attention. For each size you want five, five to six, three, four, five. Now I'm going to increase the size of this strip and for me it will be the width. I'm going to make sure my lock aspect is off. 
I want my height to remain at a 0.5 and I want my width at 4. Then I will duplicate that Control D six times. So and make the cut at six rows or copy and paste for a total of six. Now my bottom one, again I'm going to take it and I'm going to change my width to a 4.5. Enter. Same as before. I'm going to duplicate it for a total of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 6. Okay, there we go. Now I got it. And hit apply. And last but not least, I need to pick up and duplicate one of these. Control D. I'm going to go for two rows this time. And this one's going to be quite different than the rest. This is going to make that little loop that goes on the top of your bow. And I'm going to size this last section down to a width of 2.5. Now you can see that the little ends, the, the circles, are changing shape just a tiny bit. It won't matter when you're finally done. Let's look at what we've got. We have five of each size. We're good to go. Now all we need to do is send this to our machine and we'll be cutting and putting together a bow. Alrighty, there's my little Zara Zing, and I've got my Christmas paper, which is part of the Recollections Jolly and Bright collection. Some cute, cute prints in there. I've got it matted up, ready to go, and we'll send it to the machine in just a sec. I, for the life of me, can't remember where, but it said if you run your brayer, the flat one, over your cuts, then they're much easier to weed, and they truly are. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull off my paper, and you can see that I've got quite a bit left, so I can actually coordinate a card front, even a gift tag with my bow. And I'm going to pull up my little pieces, taking care not to tear the openings and I leave them sized together. That's very important to size them together. So I'll end up with three, four stacks and you'll see why shortly. Love this little machine. It is just as precise, quick, and actually reasonably quiet. And come up here and cut without waking anybody up. The bedroom's right across the hall. Okay, and my final pieces, which I'll put right there. Okay, now I'm going to swivel you around, so sorry, and get ready to show you how to assemble the bow. The most necessary part of this is a one inch brass fastener. I picked these up at, I think it was Office Depot. There were a hundred in the bag, it wasn't very much money. The next most important item is something with a round handle. I happen to have my um, quilling tool and I also have a paintbrush. You can use either one. Um, I've used a wooden skewer. I just have this. And you want to soften up the paper. It's pretty stiff, so you want to run it over the, the round tool just to get it to kind of um, to bend. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do all of them because once you start assembling your bow, it's hard to let go.
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to assemble the bow. And it gets a little bit tricky at the very beginning, but it's not hard. The first thing you're going to do is take one of your shortest strips and you're going to roll it around on top of itself. Overlap the opening, my big fingers are in the way, and I'm going to slide my brad into it from the inside. Now I'm going to simply take all the other, the remaining four of the small pieces and place them so that they crisscross on the brad. You start with the smallest piece and work your way to the largest. And you can arrange them when you're all done. Now I'm going to move to the next size up. Forming an X, I'm going to go in between the smaller ones. Again, making it like a cross from the back. Now you're doing everything from the back. You've got to keep that in mind. Don't get confused. I did the first time. And last but not least, I'm going to put my larger ones on. These are not last because I still have my tendrils. And four. Now I'm going to put my streamers. With these, you want to take care that you have the colored paper opposite. In other words, you're going to put it backwards. What looks like backwards. Squish it up and open your brad. Turn it over and simply arrange your bow. Now if you use paper that has a, a different color on the backing instead of white, that will give your bow an, an added dimension. And there you have it. Cute little bow and it was so, so simple to make. And arrange your little streamers any way you want. All right, I guess that's it. Now we're gonna go make some more bows. Have a great one. Until next time, bye.